guys. Welcome back to IFRC season. I'm Aleda Mlautu, and I run this uh, financial reporting page. Uh, you know, we have a relocation and career playlist where we talk about uh, how to relocate to either Canada, UK, US, Ireland, or wherever you are looking to relocate to. Yeah, so today with me, I have uh, a wonderful guest uh, that I'll be talking about his experience in relocating uh, to the United Kingdom via uh, a job offer. Yeah, so, you know, basically, we've been talking more about uh, having to relocate to UK, Canada, by uh, getting a work permit. Yeah, so he'll be sharing with us his experience, how he processed it, and uh, everything you need to know about uh, relocating to the United Kingdom via sponsorship from an employer. Yeah, so today I have with me Joshua Matthew, and uh, I will be asking him some questions here, and uh, he'll be introducing himself shortly as well. Yeah, so uh, if you have any questions after this uh, recording, you can actually put it in the comment section. Uh, I will address it, and if there are anyone that uh, he needs us to address, I could probably just chat him up and uh, he will provide an answer that I will respond to. Okay, so uh, thank you, Joshua, for taking our time for this. Uh, and I will begin uh, by you introducing yourself to uh, those on my channel to uh, tell us about yourself, who you are, where you are, uh, and what you do. Thank you so much, Adida Mola. I'm really thrilled to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Joshua Matthew. I'm a Scrum certified product owner. I currently work as a product manager with Welcome Sanger. Um, Welcome Sanger is a genomics research institute in the UK, um, one of the top in the world, actually. And I work within a parasite and microbes team where I function as a product manager for the program. Um, before now, I've worked in several other places. I've worked as a data analyst with a multinational telecommunication um, company back in Nigeria. I've also worked as a co-founder and a product manager in startup ecosystem back in Nigeria as well. I have a background in physics and um, I love to play the piano when I'm not working. I also love to volunteer and reach out to people that are socioeconomically marginalized. And lastly, I run a podcast as well. So nice. I think that's all about myself. I nice. can share at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joshua. And uh, about Thank this you. podcast, you also tell us about it. Yeah, because I've looked through it and there are quite a number of uh, important information that I can actually get from there. And also, you also talked about your location tips as well. Yeah, so you can check him out. I'll put the uh, uh, the name of his YouTube on the screen here, and I'll also put it in the description box so that I can look him up and follow. Based on what you said, I want to believe that you located from Nigeria to United Kingdom, right? And it was through yes. work permit. Nice. Yes. Okay, meaning that it was sponsored by your employer, right? Absolutely. Okay, all right. Yeah, so basically, I'd like you to share with our audience, uh, I mean, your journey from Nigeria to United Kingdom uh, on a work permit. What was it like? Uh, well, mine is not like the conventional journey. To be honest, I wasn't actively and aggressively looking to to move from Nigeria to UK. I was honestly looking for a remote job. Oh, no. And so at the time, I was still working as a data analyst and I was not working for a period of three months. So within that time, I took time to sort of recalibrate, re-strategize and reinvent myself. and. Um, so I've already had this network of people, professionals um, on LinkedIn and on, of course, other social media platforms. So when I was ready to get back into the work ecosystem, I reached out to a friend. It was a casual conversation, if you would believe that. And he was asking how my job was. And I said, well, I'm not working at the moment. And so we just drifted in that line. So he pointed me to the career page of where he is working, which is where I am currently working. Nice. Uh, so you can guess how the story ended. But yeah. yeah, in talking about the journey, I saw the job application um, opening. I applied for it. I wrote a cover letter and um, rewrote my CV to make sure that it blends with the job. And then I had a couple of interviews, which um, of course landed me the job at the end of the day. And the job came with a sponsorship. 
so it was mandated for me to relocate to the UK. I was even asking if there was the option to work remotely. Are you kidding? Because of some... I'm telling you, you wouldn't believe me. Wow. <laughs> I did not realize how how um, important it was to get a sponsorship and how difficult it yeah. can be sometimes yeah. uh, until I got here in the UK and hear stories from other people. So the the long and short is that I got a sponsorship um, visa that came with a job and I was relocated and reimbursed for my relocation costs wow, down to the last penny. Wow, yeah. that's beautiful. Congratulations. Wow, that, that's great. Thank you very much. What, was there like a referral program? Was it I referred you or could you have actually gotten the job even without, uh, I mean, if you had just applied normally, would you have actually been able to get the job? I think that's a very good question, really, because so I, he doesn't have the capacity or the power to refer me for okay. the job okay. because, yeah, they've, he's not got affiliation with the department I'm working with or the recruitment okay. process. Okay. But what he did help me with, and this is something I think is very important for people that are seeking jobs, whether you're seeking job in the UK, Canada, wherever, even if it's in Nigeria, what you should understand is the landscape of the organization you're going into, right? If you've got people that understand how it operates, yeah. what is expected of you, what the recruitment process is like. I think these are the things that really helped me. I had several, I think about three in, um, sessions with him just trying to work out, okay, what do you think they will be expecting? Okay, this is the job description. In your own opinion, how does this apply in practice? It is not enough to read through the job description and the requirement. That is theoretically. You need somebody that can tell you for a fact how these things are meant to be exemplified in the suitable candidate. So he sort of gave me that tip, okay, this is how you're meant to represent yourself, express yourself. You know, you could have the competency and what it takes to land the job. Yeah. But if you cannot sell yourself the right way, and I mean this with all honest opinion, you know, if you cannot sell yourself the right way, yeah. then your chances drop drastically. So we had that back and forth conversation. I asked questions around the policies, how they work in the organization, the kind of behavioral attributes that they look out for, what the team culture is, what the work culture is, and you know what is the overall impact that the organization is adding. Yes, you can get this information online, but if you get it from somebody that is working there, they get to give you the practical aspect of this information so it's not just reading statistics or numbers but in reality what are the day to days right and this is where you can um, convince your recruiters that you know where you're coming to yeah. you have the acumen you have the competence to yeah. be the right and suitable candidates for it so it was even at that point that i realized the essence of cover letters yeah. as little as it sounds uh -huh. the cover letter was read thoroughly because they made several reference to the cover letter nice. than my resume nice. so that was a surprising <laughs> thing that i picked up so he emphasized the need for me to write the cover letter nice. and to make sure that i have portrayed the right information about nice. myself my experiences and what i'm bringing to the team in that cover letter so i was able to put that together and i, I think i indeed even made a a a, a um a session yeah, about cover yeah, letters. Yeah, and I all saw that, that on so, your page. So, yeah, you yeah, guys so can that, check that, it out, actually. That, that was me sharing exactly how I was able to piece together the cover letter because yeah. what he told me actually happened. He said, your cover letter is what they'll look out for. This job you're applying for is mostly applied by applied to by PhD holders, and I did nice. not have a PhD. I only have my PSC. Awesome. Right. So there's a high chance that they did not take a second glance at my resume, but ah. they did read my cover letter because they kept making references. The first interview I had made reference to the cover letter. It was for five minutes. Yeah. The second interview was two hours, a panel wow. of six interviewers, and they wow. made reference <laughs> to my cover letter as well. Nice. So you can see that they did not only read it, but they digested everything I've said yeah. and then asked me questions to buttress those points. So yes, wow. Wow. Uh, it did have an influence. Having somebody in the organization has a yeah. huge influence. They may not refer you or recommend yeah. you, yeah. Yeah. But getting them to share information about the organization yeah. and then you can reposition, re-strategize to express yeah. yourself as a suitable candidate can go a long awesome. way in helping. Awesome.
Thank you so much, Joshua. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I okay. had to ask that question because I'm sure some people will say, what if I don't have anybody in the company? Will I still be able to get a job? Yeah, because the essence is that it's not compulsory that you have somebody in the company. You can mm -hmm. actually go to the career page, apply. Yeah, the only thing is that when you get to the uh, interview, then how you express yourself and how yeah. you deliver will now also be based on your experience. And probably mm -hmm. if I actually had somebody there that can show you the way, yeah. Yeah, but to get to the door is the most important thing here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to put that one out there so that you can just go to the career page of wherever company you're looking to apply to and apply directly and most likely they will invite you for an interview. Yeah, so it's not until Absolutely. you get a referral from somebody before you can actually uh, get that job sponsorship. Thank you for sharing Absolutely. that. Yeah. If I can even add something. So yeah. at that point, I was also looking to join one of the big fours. Right. Okay. And I, nice. all I did was to take the email address of yeah. not even because going to the career page, I did not yeah. see an opening. So oh, I took okay. the email address of the HR okay. personnel and I sent them an email with yeah. a cover letter detailing yeah. what I can do for them yeah. and my resume. You will yeah. be amazed that I got an interview. Nice. So nice. What, what you have just <laughs> said is very valid because mm -hmm. you do not need to have somebody there to refer sure. you. Having somebody there can help you in understanding uh -huh. the context of the organization and that yeah. is it. It yeah. can help you in understanding how to approach them, but yeah. it does not mean they would just put you in the job. Yeah. What can help you get the job is how you present yourself during That's the interview, just... getting your chance to prove yourself how suitable you are a candidate for the job role is very important. Like I just said, awesome. taking an email address, sending them a well needed together email, and a cover letter and my resume got me an interview two interviews to be frank awesome. i was already in the uk when they reached out to me for the final interview and i said awesome. oh i'm so sorry I mean... <laughs> because i'm already committed somewhere I mean... yeah. Just yeah, that makes sense. Point. yeah thank you yeah. so much for sharing that yeah I, I also wanted to ask that were there any specific certification that i had to uh, probably uh, get uh, before relocating or is it i mean because there's this assumption that people do have that it is until you get the certification of certification of the country you are going to before you can actually get uh, jobs there. And I mm. shared also that for me, as an accountant, I only had my own ICANN in Nigeria, AC, and that was what I used. Some people will say that, oh, you need to have CPA to work in mm. Canada or work anywhere else. But I didn't have another certificate except that. So I wanted to ask, mm. since you are in a different uh, field, that did you have, have to maybe write the exams before being invited for an interview? I didn't even write IELTS to even begin with. <laughs> nice. <laughs> because I didn't write IELTS. <laughs> I didn't write IELTS, you know. Sure. But but that's a very incredible question. I think in my introduction, I said I am Scrum certified. So bring, being a product manager, yeah. you have some landmarks to achieve. But that is by no way the threshold for you to be able to get a job elsewhere. Applying for this job, I only had some online courses that I did, just showing my dexterity, my, my versatile base of knowledge, yeah. and showing my interest in continuous learning. That was it. So everything I've learned was not a prerequisite to getting the job, or all the certificates I've had was not a prerequisite to getting the job. In fact, the determining certificates that I've had was after I got the job, and it was sponsored by my office. So there was no basic certificate that says, Oh, once you have this, then you can start applying. No, I only had my BSc from a university in the northern part of Nigeria. Nice. And this amazes a lot of people till date. Like, you did not have an MSc from the UK. You did not have any certification from the UK. Yeah. You didn't even have certification from Scrum, which is like the official body within the Scrum framework for um, product managers, product owners, and all that. I didn't have any of those. I only had my BSc from a local university in Nigeria and my experience to show for it, and of course, my tenacity to cling to the job. So yeah, I don't think there's any certification that I can think of for you to get a job in the UK. But awesome. getting the job, you can now build and reinvent yeah, yourself, of course. Yeah. Because certification gives you credibility and shows awesome. that you have a continuous learning drive, but that yeah. is not a guarantee that you get a job or a prerequisite to get awesome. a job. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I also wanted to ask that. I mean, if you had to look at, I mean, in retrospect now, what what do you think are those things that contributed most to you uh, getting a job offer in the UK? Mm. 
I, I think I just I, I, I read a lot. That's one. I, I read a lot of things like related to my career path, things that help me. And then so with reading and learning so much comes that burden to share. So because you know so much, you feel like and you converse with people and you realize that there's a lacuna in their knowledge base, you try to share and help them fill those gaps. And this was one of the things that bettered some of my activities on LinkedIn. Nice. And I became deliberately so active on LinkedIn, awesome. right? So awesome. being active in your career space yeah. is a huge help. You know, it can be a deal breaker when you apply for a job and they go to your LinkedIn page, which is like the official yeah. page for professionals. Yeah. And all they can find there are unrelated posts, yeah. unrelated reactions to posts that do not even concern your career. Yeah things that are not very helpful to telling them how proficient you are with your job. Yeah. But applying for the job, I could tell you that some people went to my LinkedIn to check and they saw that I was yes. making posts and content around data analytics, yeah. product management, entrepreneurship. Yeah. And so they realized that these things tie up together to yeah. give me the requisite knowledge base. Again, not yeah. just certification, knowledge base to show that at the end of the day, if I get hired for this job, I can deliver. Yeah, so one thing that, that can help yeah. you is getting that online presence yeah. and showing a track record of um, proficiency, being able to share knowledge and then creating networks is very yeah. important. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for yeah. that. Yeah, because I know I once shared also that, I mean, during my interview, that's the one that I currently are working with now. I, I was even, because I do have a website where I do share accounting and stuff, and I also share on LinkedIn as well. And during the interview, they actually went through my website. Mm -hmm. Like, they asked, they were going through it like this. I was like, oh, awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. stuff like that, I mean, they might look so minute, but then the, the impact that they do have could actually be the deal breaker, as, as I said. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Uh, one more thing to ask. Uh, because I've seen a lot of people ask questions about who oh, I've been applying so much. I mean, I've been applying severally to different companies, different countries, and I haven't gotten a feedback. So I just want to ask you that, uh, what would you have to say to them? I mean, especially those that have uh, been applying a lot and they've not been getting the uh, feedback that they are looking for. Thank you. I think I will just borrow some terminology from Scrum Framework, which okay. supports agility. Oh, okay. It says inspect and adapt. Okay. You keep applying rejections. I see them as love letters. In fact, I call them yeah. love letters. Sure. They are inevitable. Yeah. Failures are part of the success story. If yeah. you don't fail, how would you learn? Right. Yeah. So I see them as learning points. So the more rejections you get, the better you get at it. You know, yeah. the better you get at understanding where your lapses are. What are your um flaws where did you fall short and then you reinvent so you inspect and say okay why is it that i did not get this job what am i missing what am i lacking yeah. then you try to incorporate if it means taking online courses just to get the knowledge base and yeah. to also express that you have a drive for continuous learning because trust me you your employer wants to hire you for one reason and one reason only adding value to them sure so if you've been rejected at any point you need to check what value are you missing Sometimes it could just be that you you have other people that are just um, better positioned for the job. It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that you are falling too short of being competent for that job. It just means that you need to sell yourself even better. So it may not necessarily mean you going to get more certification. It could just be looking at your cover letter, looking at your resume yeah. and reinventing that and selling yeah. what you can do even more better. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for so that. They should keep applying. Yeah, just, <laughs> that's just it. I mean, keep applying and make sure that your your strategizing the way you should. I mean, your yeah. CV, your cover letter, they should be up to date and they should meet. I mean, mm -hmm. if you yourself you are going through it and you don't find it attractive, then no employer will be attracted to you. Exactly. Yeah, so just work on yourself and keep applying and don't give up because if I had given up on the last uh, on the last application I made, I wouldn't have gotten this job. Yeah. So I mean oh, and the fact idea. that some people have done it and they've gotten it most likely means that uh, you will also get it as well. Uh, then lastly, uh before you leave, I just want to ask that because you've you've shared quite a number of stuff on your uh page that's your Joshua's page you've shared data analytics you've also shared uh relocating to uh, the UK and some of the tips that are important so can you just briefly tell us about that uh, so that we could also I mean those watching will be able to uh, follow through 
Uh, thank you very much. Yes, so I run Drashivas, which is basically a community of learners, people that are passionate about learning, career growth, and professional development. Yeah. Um, so I started out working my way through data analytics in 2020. So I released a podcast that talks about data science and how to proceed as a data scientist. Then recently, because I'm more actively working in the product management space, I've started a podcast talking about product management nice. and the intricacies of working as a product manager in different industries, interviewing people from various sort of um, finance, um, genomics, whatever industry you can imagine. And then I'm doing something around data analytics as well. So nice. those are running in parallel. Um, then I talk about career as well. So my last most recent post about career is the cover letter writing in order for you to get job, whether it's in UK, US, wherever it is, you can easily look at those and um, pick one tip or two to see how best to revise your your application strength. So yes, I, I do all of that in order to share and share and share. Adding value, you know, it can never be too much. And um, my audio podcasts are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Radio Public. Uh, you could just search for Joshivers and then you find my audio podcast. I would also share the link with you nice. for those who are right. interested. Yeah, so I'll yeah. put it in the description box for you guys so that you can actually uh following uh, thank you so much joshua for your time really appreciate that uh thank you for yeah. sharing your knowledge and everything okay all right yeah. so that's about it guys uh if you like this video please put a comment share uh and i'll be back for more cheers mm -hmm.